my name is Terry Kelly. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, we're very excited about this new landing page on our after school resource. Activeafterschool.ca is a source where you can find activity ideas, program planning support, snack recipes, uh, and information about sort of training and professional development. And so today we're very excited to have with us Drew Mitchell, who is the Director of Physical Literacy for the Sport for Life Society. Uh, and he works as a consultant focused on the development of physical literacy at the community level and promoting the Canadian Sport for Life movement. He's a graduate of Simon Fraser University with a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology. Drew has worked extensively in the sports system as an educator and developer of programs for the past 19 years. He managed sport technical and performance services for Via Sport BC and was the manager of science and medicine programs for Sport Med BC, where he worked with over 50 different sports at the local, provincial, and national level. He is also a past member of the Canadian National Canoeing Team and a former Health and Lifestyle Coordinator at the Downtown Vancouver YMCA. Drew has been involved in sport and fitness for over 40 years as an athlete, coach, administrator, volunteer, developer, and manager. So uh, I'm going to welcome Drew, who's going to walk you through our new resource and uh, talk to you a little bit about um, how physical literacy is developing in Canada. Welcome, Drew. Thank you very much, Carrie, and, and thank you everybody today for, for participating, taking the time out of your day to do that. Um, and thank you everyone for letting me know who you are. It gives me a bit of a better perspective as to where you are from and uh, the organizations you work for. I see there are a couple of uh, people from Kingston. Um, uh, I have one daughter at Queen's just finishing third year and I'll be taking my son uh, there on Sunday to get re get all set up as he goes there as well. So I have a, a lot of investment in Kingston going on right now. Um, as Carrie said, I'm the Director of Physical Literacy uh, with uh, the Sport for Life Society. I'm based just outside of Vancouver in a place called Port Moody, British Columbia. Um, I'm currently in Hamilton at Sir William Osler Elementary. Uh, for those of you who may know Mark Verbeek, uh, who's been a big advocate of physical literacy in Ontario. This is his school. We're currently running a physical literacy 301, uh, integrating physical literacy into your programs and practice session this afternoon uh, here and uh, as part of the Ontario Physical Literacy Summit, which is tomorrow. So again, thank you everyone for, for coming today. Um, what we want to do is talk a little bit about this new resource, which we're really excited about and working in partnership with the Leisure Information Network, Carrie and her team, and, uh, and talk a little bit more about how we can um, increase the awareness and the knowledge of physical literacy and also hopefully make resources a little bit easier for people to access. So the purpose of the, of the project itself was to increase physical literacy and support the increase of physical literacy awareness and knowledge. Um, we've probably never had at any one given time more uh, information available about physical literacy than we do today. But the internet is a wide and woolly, wild and woolly place sometimes, and it is hard to understand where some of the resources are. Um, are these resources, um, you know, are they credible? Because um, not, because we need to also remember that not everything on the internet is credible. Um, and uh, and how can I best start to use some of these resources? for the types of things that you do in your communities. So uh, we were very fortunate to, to receive some support from the Ontario Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport. And I, I do have to give a big shout out to uh, the, the, uh, the ministry. Um, they have been a great supporter of physical literacy in the province of Ontario. Uh, Ontario in many ways has made some very strategic investments around this particular area. Um, and starts to really um, make a difference, uh, whether it's at the community level, through their uh, Ontario Sport and Recreation Community Funds, um, through the Trillium Foundation, and also through Healthy Kids Community Challenge. So there's, there's a number of very interesting projects that some of you who are from Ontario may already be working on right now, or connected to, or even looking forward to applying for going forward. So there's a, a number of very good things that are happening in Ontario. Every, every province has, <coughs> has their thing going on, which is great. Um, I just uh, wanted to particularly uh, identify the Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and Sport in Ontario. Um, it's been a great partnership working with Carrie and the Leisure Information Network, a great facilitator of information 
uh, and, and knowledge awareness. Uh, so it's been it's been a great project for us uh, to to start to get to know uh, their team a little bit more and also start to gather, collate, uh, organize some of these resources a little bit better. Um, it's you know I think in with every day there's more and more information coming up online and people are wanting to know things. So whether you work in after school care, whether you work in early childhood education, whether you work in recreation or, or in one of the health units uh, or in the health authorities, um, there's lots of, or in education, there's lots of places uh, that you can find information. So as Kerry said, uh, you know, it is part of the after school partnership. This is where the particular uh, resource is located, the Physical Literacy Learning Lab. Um, Previous to this, High Five has done a learning lab as well. For those of you that are aware of High Five, it's a very good program focused on quality assurance and, and creating positive positive learning environments for children focused uh, people who work with children aged six to twelve. So it's a it's a great uh, it's a great opportunity for people to get engaged around there as well. So the learning lab has has been a, a, an interesting experience for us going forward. Um, it's uh, there's a couple of interact uh, interactive but video based pieces. Uh, we start to really drill down into what is physical literacy, and and a lot of people, you know, they focus on, um, you know, sometimes it seems a little wordy. The definition, which is off here to the left, um, the definition currently is the definition. We're trying to be consistent with that. We're trying to use the same language all the time. We're trying to really um, keep be as consistent as possible with that. Um, we have to remember that one of the great examples in Canada is literacy. Literacy has been around in Canada for over 100 years, probably 110, 115 years. Um, it's been very successful at making our population more literate. Um, we're one of the most physically literate countries in the world. Still work to be done in getting more and more people um, with a higher level of literacy, but they've been a great example uh, as to what, how best to, to run a process. We also know that literacy has a number of definitions still after 110 years. So I think the key thing is, is that there are a couple different definitions out there. We want to focus on this one as, as being the primary one. They all have the same kind of key tenant. Um, I think it's important to remember that it's more than just the physical skills. Um, it is creating that confidence and that motivation along with the knowledge and understanding of why I'm doing it, why is it important. Um, that is the whole package which makes up physical literacy. So I think, you know, FMS and fundamental movement skills is an important part of, of this whole process. Um, tends to be the thing we put most of our, our currency behind and most of our time and energy behind. But it, it really is more than that. So how do we make how do we make the activities and the games and the practices that we do with children, youth, and adults, how do we make them more physical literacy, physical literacy developing? How do we make them more confidence building? How do we make people motivated to come out and do them um, more often? So th those are the things that I, I want to emphasize from, from the definition. Uh, we focused on four main areas in the collections, uh, an assess me, show me, teach me, activate me kind of approach. Um, we've gone this way because we think it's important that, that these, are, these are steps that people go through. A lot of people want to jump right to activate me. <laughs> so um, maybe there's some other stuff we should you know, try and do before that. Uh, not everybody's assessing. Um, they maybe don't feel comfortable or haven't necessarily connected to that information on how to do that. One of the things that I think is, is that we've certainly learned, in, in, and it has been a very, fairly new experience, assessment of physical literacy is only um, three to four years old. Uh, there are a number of tools in Canada. I'll show you more about that in a moment. But um, I really find more so than, than not what assessment can do is inform uh, and in, in build knowledge for your instruction of people. And if it, it, at the very least it does that, it lets you know what Johnny or Janie is, is able to do, what they're currently learning and whatever they're doing. Uh, I think it, it really can help you in forming better programming for them, better teaching for them, better learning for them. So it is a, it is a valuable component here. Uh, three other subsections we have are we obviously focus on the physical physical literacy assessment tools. 
Um, we've just started to a uh, physical literacy research section. It is relatively new because there isn't a ton of direct research on physical literacy, and we're just currently stocking that right now. Uh, and then, of course, there's Canada's physical literacy consensus statement, which was established last year by a national consortium that came together to give a bit of an anchor to what physical literacy is and reinforce what physical literacy is. So we'll just, we'll just sort of move on here to some of the other sections. So in the Assess Me section, we do identify four tools in Canada that can be used for physical literacy assessment. Uh, each of them have their own, uh, their own components. Um, we, we start off with the physical, physical literacy assessment for youth or play tools. Um, they are directed at individuals seven and up. The, they help determine gaps in physical literacy development and uh, provide valuable information. Uh, we find that these tools are most effective in program evaluation, in helping people who are delivering programs find out if their programs are being effective, uh, in giving feedback and allowing for a monitoring tool over time. There's the CAPL tool, the Canadian Assessment of Physical Literacy uh, tool, um, which provides a, a whole bunch of supporting pieces. Uh, this is out of Mark Tremblay's lab in Ontario. Um, it also incorporates a physical literacy, or sorry, a physical fitness component and uh, a kinetopometry or measurement component. Um, so it's a little different than, than some of the other tools. Uh, and uh, you can find out more by clicking on that link and getting more information around that. Uh, Passport for Life, which is uh, developed by PHE Canada. Um, it is used lar largely in the school setting and uh, by teachers and students to help get a better understanding. It is broken down into a, a number of components as well. Um, and then, uh, and then there's, uh, there actually is the fundamental uh, movement skills tools, uh, which are uh, not on this particular slide. Uh, from 60 Minute Kids Club, and I'll talk more about those in a second, which focus specifically on fundamental movement skills only. Um, but it has quite a quite a nice uh, video-based um, teaching tool to help you understand the four quadrants and and where each of the skills are at. So it's actually quite a, an interesting tool tool to get started with. Um, on the Teach Me side, um, there's a ton of resources here, all listed out. Um, from here, you can really start to drill down into learning more about what physical literacy is and why it's important, uh, learning more about that. Um, so whether it's static PDF resources, video-based resources, um, a wide variety of resources that are out there. Um, there is more and more happening in this, in this particular area. I'd say this particular area is the largest growing of the, of the four areas we've identified uh, in the Teach Me section. Um, and, and the opportunity to go in this section and, and, and learn more, uh, drill down into more of these resources is, is there for you. Um, in the Activate Me section, uh, you can certainly touch base with one of these organizations. This is just gives you a snapshot of some of the organizations that are involved in development of physical literacy. Um, they, they offer training, they offer workshops, they offer um, courses to help uh, better uh, enable your staff, or your volunteers to be uh, more knowledgeable and, and uh, provide a, a better physical literacy experience at the end of the day. So again, this is a snapshot of some of the organizations that are involved in this particular area. It starts to give you a bit of a taste for what is out there. Um, and then uh, what we have is the Q&A corner, which I find to be very valuable. A lot of people, um, you know, they really want to know what, what this particular area, um, what physical literacy is. They have a lot of questions around it. So this is where I find from a learning lab perspective, this has been really valuable. So we obviously, you know, with physical literacy, we start off with the definition. Um, and then from there, um, you know, there's no doubt we, we really promote the inclusive nature of what physical literacy is. Um, it is about a unique journey for every each and in, in each individual. Uh, it is over your lifespan. It is not a specific space and time or all of a sudden you get to a certain time and wow, I'm physically literate now, way to go. Um, it, is, it is a body of work over your lifespan. And in many ways it does parallel 
um, fitness and your fitness status over your life course. There's a strong parallel between uh, a high level of physical literacy and being uh, reasonably fit at the same time uh, as you cycle through your lifespan. So it's, a, it's an interesting parallel there. Um, it obviously can be enjoyed through a, a variety of activities and experiences. Um, it's interesting when I, when I do workshops with people um, and I want to try and get it across uh, to people that um, um, what, what physical literacy is, is that uh, when they're doing their games, when they're doing their activities, and even in the case of uh, sport, when they're doing their practice, all these games and practices and, and activities are, are intentional practice. That's all they are. Um, it's, like, it's like your ABCs and one, two, threes um, in math and language arts. It's like your homework, only it tends to be a lot more fun and tremendously social. I think you'd all agree that activity is a tremendously social event. Um, it's, uh, it's where kids get engaged in ways that they don't in anywhere else in society. So it's, it's a very interesting uh, experience. And, and creating, creating your activities so that they are physical literacy, physical literacy uh, enhancing uh, only increases the, uh, the quality of the experience, the skill developing experience and the potential confidence building opportunity for people who will participate in those. Um, and of course, physical literacy needs to be valued and nurtured through over the life. And, and we tend to focus on children and youth, but it really is important for adults as well. Um, we know that adults who are not confident movers when they age, uh, they become reclusive, they're not as socially engaged. There's a whole bunch of factors that are involved here. So uh, really important to understand that physical literacy is not only for children and youth, it is for all citizens. Um, what are the components? Uh, again, we've focused in earlier on the definition of is physical competence, confidence, motivation, knowledge, and understanding. Um, those, are, those are key tenets, uh, and they are the, the foundation to the definition. Um, what kind of environment supports literacy and physical literacy? Well, really, we don't teach physical literacy. What we do is we create the environment and the opportunity for physical literacy to be developed. Um, that's really in all the work that we do. So it's, it's like you don't teach literacy, you teach people how to read. And you don't teach, you don't teach uh, numeracy, you teach people how to do mathematical equations and various components like that. So just to put it in the same context, we don't teach physical literacy, you develop it, and you develop it through a number of processes over time. And it's important to have quality instruction by people who are trained. Uh, and it is important to have both structured and unstructured experiences um, for everybody. I mean, I think part of the challenge right now has been the, uh, the lack of unstructured outside experiences for kids across Canada. Um, it's very tough. People are, you know, have to be very creative to make that happen. The, the more I think that we can provide those different environments and those different experiences, is only going to be better for our kids over time. Um, what is the difference between FMS and physical literacy? Well, uh, it really we're talking about the skills development component, and uh, you know, in, in comparing that to some of the outcomes of that, which is increased confidence and motivation, and knowledge and understanding, and how they work together to produce a, uh, a more quality and uh, activity experience through one's life. You can see in the graph below that um, this gives two examples of what over a life course somebody might have in the way of their journey. They may have their ups and downs, depends how um, busy they are in their life. And as I said earlier, there is some interesting parallels between uh, physical literacy and uh, physical fitness over, over a lifespan. Um, why is it important? Um, uh, we've we've taken an approach in this learning lab to to use the human capital model. Um, I'm not going to read this verbatim, but um, it's really important to understand that it's more than just the physical components um, that we work on. It's bigger than that, um, and uh, you can find more information in the in the resource around this. But we really promote the idea of a holistic approach um, to to way the way that we do this. It takes a broader, more inclusive view of physical activity. Um, you know, it does. It it really does um, 
encompass more things. And, and I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of the social engagement opportunity through increased physical literacy and, uh, and through, through increased physical literacy, increased physical activity. Um, it is critical for our kids and for our, you know, our adults too to, to have that experience, to be socially connected to others and, uh, and to have that positive mental experience as well we hear a lot more these days around the importance of mental health and mental positive mental health. Well, physical and mental health are not mutually exclusive of each other. They are intimately connected. And so it's, it's really important to understand that, that um, the physical component is, uh, is, can be a, a great supporter and regulator of mental health as well. And, uh, it, you know, it's, it's not a panacea. It's not going to cure all ills. But it's important that we have a, a sound physical status along with our mental status. Um, how do you develop it? Um, it? It takes a while. It takes time. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a journey, right? Um, but if you think about it, um, for some of you that are maybe a little bit older, you can remember back to when, when we were all young. We did a lot of this organically, um, outside, running outside the house, uh, hooking up with our friends climbing trees, making up games, um, tearing around the neighborhood, uh, walking to school and doing lots of different things. In those two sets of activities, lots of stuff was developed, lots of decisions were made, and lots of independence was allowed. Today, um, a lot of that has been sort of gleaned away in our urban centers, and so kids don't get that so much anymore. So when they are involved in activity, the it's almost imperative that there is a skill developing component um, that is engaged in that because if they don't have that, then they really are in a situation where <clears throat> they are not developing skills intentionally. And where physical activity can sometimes be dumbed down, so to speak, is that when we just let kids run around and there's not an intentionality, and I'm not saying we don't give them unstructured time, um, I think we can create environments that are structured in nature but have an unstructured component to them and allow kids to still be intentional in, they don't even know they're doing it, in creating skills. Um, just running around, blowing off steam is important, but we also need to be thinking about the skill building component as well. And having well-trained adults um, who are caring and accountable uh, is a critical component. Um, again, lots of resources under our four categories available here. Um, and then a full list of organizations um, uh, through, the, uh, through the Show Me and Teach Me sections. There's lots of different uh, components there um, to help you along. And uh, again, we talked a little bit about assessment. Uh, there, is, there are components in there that uh, lots of tools that are out there and more for you to find. Um, I think it's really important when, you know, I see all of, all the different organizations are all with, how can you take what you do in your community and connect it to what others are doing in your community intentionally? And I think that that's a great opportunity through physical literacy. There seems, tends to be a, a sort of almost a collegial kind of approach that can, that can be nurtured. So I see Gary Shelton's on the call here. Uh, and Gary's with the Edmonton Sport Council, and Edmonton's done some amazing work around their play groups um, to try and connect school, sport, uh, education, or sorry, um, health and recreation to actually function better and be more communicative, um, be intentional in, in that connectivity. Um, and how can we actually create activities that are interconnected. So I'm going to give you one scenario here. So say in an elementary school, say in a grade two or grade three class, for three or four weeks we're in the phys ed program in the school um, for that particular grade, um, they're going to do a specific uh, sport-based uh, activity that will be built around a number of activities and games that reinforce or develop some of the skills that are involved in that sport. Well, wouldn't it be great is actually before that even started, that information was sent home to the parents uh, that talked about how they're going to be doing this particular block and that the next steps for this block, the next step 
developmentally for this block, for this particular sport, is going to be available at the Recreation Department as a program following the delivery of this at the school. And then from the Recreation Department, um, there's an intentionality around uh, once, you know, for those kids that uh, have created curiosity or an interest around that sport activity, and go to the rec center and take that next step. And from there, if they're, you know, still keen and want to do even more, they can step into the sport club setting for the next step after that. But we're very intentional about connecting the dots and connecting the activity, activity potential of kids to be able to be engaged. Um, and I just gave you one example. You know, it could be YMCA's, it could be Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, it could be any number of foundations that are involved in, in activities after school care. Um, lots of different opportunities. Um, I think there's a great opportunity for, for people to, um, to be more intentional around what they do, not, in their, not only in their, own, in their own programs or practice, but also in connecting with others in the community um, in, in doing these sorts of uh, activities. The this particular learning lab is here to support uh, connectivity uh, and knowledge building and increasing awareness um, to help people move forward in, in, in that particular area. Um, so again, how can I support physical literacy development? Again, going out and, and providing quality movement experiences for, for anybody who's partaking in your, in your programs. Um, a, again, it's not taught or developed. Um, it is, or sorry, it's not taught, it is developed. Um, and it's important to understand that distinction. Um, and we need to value it. If we don't value it, um, then it's not going to be done, and it's certainly not going to be adhered to over time or sustained. Um, so I think I think it is important that uh, that along with you know healthy eating, uh, activity is part of the, the long-term health strategy moving forward. Um, so how do we create quality opportunities throughout the day for kids to be integrated into quality activity programs? Um, how do I create that environment? Um, there, you know, you create an environment where there's exploration and learning, um, that there's a wide variety of skills that are, that are integrated, it's inclusive, um, it, it, it engages different environments on the ground, in the water, on the ice and snow. Um, so it, it, it's, it's having those different experiences that, uh, that are available. And, and we need to understand that in our communities, you may, be, you may be in a school setting, you may be in a recreation setting or a sports setting. We know that most kids, except for the homeschool kids, are in the school setting. We know that for kids in recreation programs or sport programs, they have to show up for those. Not everybody's there. So how can we connect those programs to increase the, increase the likelihood that quality activity experiences are going to be more available for more people in the community. So that's the opportunity that exists in your communities. So again, we talked a little bit earlier um, about research. Um, we are going to be adding more and more research. A couple papers have come out this summer. There's been an, a couple papers out of Mark Trombley's lab in Ontario uh, around physical literacy. Uh, there's more and more stuff that's going on in this particular area to sort of support the concept. Um, I think it's important that every good program has research supporting its validity and its concepts, um, that we are collecting metrics and data to validate over time uh, progress and effectiveness. Um, so, you know, these are opportunities when you move into the assessment area, if you want to start to do that, that you can start to get some, some data uh, and to, to, you know, the idea that, yes, our programs are great, which is totally anecdotal, is one way to do it, but if you want to play in the in the uh, funding space with health or any of these other programs, you need to have validity. You need to have um, you need to have some grounding to what you're doing. Here's an example, just a, an example of one of the many resources. Um, again, lots of different age groups here, lots of different activities, um, and this will continue to be. Um, evolved over time, this resource will continue to be uh, developed and built up and uh, we hope to continue to reinforce it over time. And then one of the things I wanted to emphasize here to you, uh, and uh, I think uh, the link 
um, is um, is uh, is at the bottom of the presenter notes. You can see that uh, creating the quality physical literacy experience. This is a resource that was created by Sport for Life, uh, supported by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and Sport last year. It's a video-based resource. Um, Want to strongly emphasize this? This is really getting down to some of the how-tos. Um, this is where a lot of people get stuck. Um, they can get maybe the what and and the why. But how, you know, how do I actually make it happen? Um, so this particular resource, which is led by Dr. Dean Criars, who created the, the play tools and has been a, one of the chief advocates um, and leaders on the physical literacy message, um, is, is really, a, it's broken up into 30 plus short video vignettes um, with some supporting PowerPoint slides and or web links to other resources. Um, I think you'll find it informative. Um, I think it'll help inform you a little bit more around how you can make some of your activities and games um, more of a quality physical literacy experience. Because really, at the end of the day, what we want to be able to have is people who are out there providing instruction or education or guidance or coaching, um, they can take any activity and they can make it a better physical literacy experience. That's where we want to get from a training and knowledge perspective is people feeling confident that they can take any activity and they can make it a better activity for people. Um, and that's an art uh, to do that, um, to be able to take a, you know, a 1 to 10 ratio and, and our friends from education who are working sometimes with 1 to 22, 1 to 30 uh, and a wide range of skills, how do they make an activity quality inside the time frame they have. So that's a real opportunity um, to, to um, value that training for those people and how, how can you and your role in your community support others who do similar stuff to you do um, to make it a more community-based approach in developing physical literacy and making our communities healthier in the long term. So just want to emphasize that as one of the resources that's there. It's a little shout out to that resource. Um, and like I say, interestingly enough, we're doing a workshop on that right now, about 50 feet away from me with Dr. Dean Criars here in Hamilton. So um, yeah, so just wanted to, uh, wanted to let you know about that. So certainly have allowed for some time for some questions. Um, and uh, I would suggest that um, we can probably do it, probably makes the most sense for people to type them into the chat box. And I, I can certainly speak to them. Probably easier than opening the lines, and I'll let Chris make that call. <laughs> um, but I'm going to guess that that's probably going to be the best way to go. Um, and uh, yeah, so he's agreeing with me on that. <laughs> Uh, looks like Nadia is typing in something right now. But uh, um, again, I think with physical literacy, we need to remember that if we can make, if we can use physical literacy as a as a method or a mode to create more confident movers, they will they will more than likely be more physically active on a more regular basis. And if they're more physically active on a regular basis then they will more than likely get fitter over time. That's the interrelationship between physical literacy, physical fitness, or physical activity, and physical fitness. So for years, we've been telling people, be active, eat healthy. Be active, eat healthy. And obviously, we have some challenges around that. And I'm going to go to Nadia and Nadia's question in a moment here. Um, uh, oh, yes, there we go. Um, so Nadia's question is, uh, yes, there's a couple things on the go right now, Nadia. So her question is around, is there a screening resource for physical literacy for children going into kindergarten? So a um, couple things on the go right now. Um, there's a Trillium project um, that uh, we are leading with McMaster University and Dr. John Kearney. Um, we are just rolling out into the early child education space for children 18 months to five years. Um, a tool called uh, Preschool Play. And the focus of this tool is to start to get a better understanding of, of uh, where skills are at developmentally. 
Um, and that project is going into pilot phase starting with September in Ontario communities through early childhood education spaces. And then Dr. Dean Criars is working on a, a kindergarten play version uh, in Winnipeg right now. Um, and uh, so that's currently what's on the go. Jody's question is on the other end of the spectrum for older adults. Um, a number of the tools that are currently available can still be used for adults. You could use them. You could use some of the play tools for adults if you wanted to. Um, but there hasn't necessarily anything. The Active for Life, what we call the Active for Life phase, which is largely adults, uh, is, has been a little bit ignored when it comes to physical literacy. And there's more and more happening right now around that. So we're starting to see more and more stuff generate. I'm actually in Toronto next week. Um, there's a project, uh, Physical Literacy in the Older Adult, being led by University of British Columbia Okanagan um, uh, that's um, starting to get ahead of steam building a model um, based on the, uh, based on the uh, physical literacy model. And uh, so there's some interesting stuff cooking and germinating there. Um, but like I say, you can probably utilize some of the tools out there right now. I would also suggest, Jody, if you want to go look at the Durable by Design um, resource, which is on the Sport for Life website, it's a new resource for physical literacy for older adults. Um, it doesn't specifically have a, an evaluation component in it, but it has a, a lot of good information around uh, engaging older adults around physical literacy, so it's there. Um, the more hard to reach populations, yeah, newcomers, low-income families, parents. Um, it, is, it is a challenge, but one of the things that I think that we potentially can use to get people more engaged is the social component. People will come together for social gatherings. Um, they will come to be engaged, and, and, and can we use that experience, that social opportunity um, to create physical skill building opportunities? Um, there are more programs that are, that are coming into place for new Canadians, for refugees, um, low-income families. It's starting to happen. Most recreation departments, or many recreation departments, uh, don't turn away, and YMCAs do not turn away people uh, based on their ability to pay. Um, so there, is, there are opportunities out there. Um, and I would suggest that if we could also reinforce what's going on in schools, then that will also help capture some of these populations that typically are at least being caught in the school component. So can we have some foundational pieces in our, in our communities to reinforce that? Uh, there isn't anything in the way of a dedicated online forum, um, but what we're finding is we, were, we are probably going to start to do more regular webinars um, to help have that and, and I think evolve those webinars a little bit more. There is, I will bring to people's attention, there is an interesting thing going on in Canada right now. It started last November. And there's a, a national physical literacy initiative to create a national strategy or an approach. Uh, to physical literacy, and what that's done is that spawned a number of provincial initiatives as well. So Sport for Life and the Coaching Association of Canada have taken a lead on the national component. Um, province of Ontario, Province of Alberta, Province of British Columbia have all taken initiatives individually to develop physical literacy strategies inside their own jurisdictions. Saskatchewan and Manitoba are starting to rumble around this as well. Um, so there's some interesting stuff that's going on, and then there's um, a, sort of connecting down further, either regionally or at community level, there's a number of discussions that are happening at the community level. Um, so whether it's uh, communities that are brought together in Ontario to have discussion, um, but there's nothing formal and dedicated. But I think Chris brings up a good point is uh, maybe that's a bit of a vacuum, and maybe that's an opportunity to be able to, to do some stuff like that. Um, so it's certainly... Um, if there's a will, uh, if there's a sorry, if there's a need and a desire for that conversation to happen more regularly, then I think uh, I think you know I could certainly see um, Sport for Life providing some of that support. I think there's a number of other organizations out there. Part of what we're trying to do with this national initiative is bring organizations together to do stuff like this a little bit more often. Um, but it is off the corner of everybody's desk. Um, uh, yeah. So, so, Joey, as an example, if you had a regional group in Waterloo, the Waterloo region, uh, if you wanted to bring a group together, I'd be happy to organize a webinar 
um, and have that discussion in your particular area, um, we're actually I'm actually delivering a physical literacy assessment in the Waterloo region November 7th for the YMCA. I'll actually be in the Waterloo area. Um, but the idea is if you wanted to bring that together, if you want to organize the people, um, I would be happy to facilitate uh, a webinar around that um, to help ha people have some discussion. And, uh, and uh, you can contact me there um, if you want to have a further discussion around that. Uh, the larger cities, yes. And we have, there are numerous ones, um, and these programs are free of charge for hard to reach people. Yeah, thank you for that, Greg. That's excellent. Um, the, uh, as an example, Hamilton has been quite, quite well connected uh, amongst the sectors. Uh, it's getting better. Um, and we had hoped that the, you know, again, with the creation of this learning lab, uh, this will only help the people having more access. Um, and again, we've created a forum here today for Greg and Nikki to share, <laughs> which is awesome. And, and, and I'd strongly recommend people who are, uh, in, you know, in these dialogues or even coming to some of these presentations, is ask questions like that and how even getting connected and finding out what each other's doing. Um, taking a little bit of time to be intentional around that can be really, um, can be really valuable. Um, oh, okay. Um, so Sandy, thank you, Sandy. Sandy's from my province in British Columbia, uh, in the Kootenays, and uh, Sandy and I have known each other for a long time. Um, but um, uh, so we are currently uh, we are currently working, just starting actually, through an Ontario Sport and Recreation Community Fund with Brock University and McMaster, um, the development of adapted play, which is going to focus on. Um, Populations with, uh, um, we're going to focus on two sets of populations. One is uh, persons who use a wheelchair, and the other is persons with mild cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, and autism. Um, so uh, we're just embarking on that project right now. It's in its early days, um, and uh, uh, we hope to see that in some of the school settings. Um, and uh, we can, you and I can have a further conversation around that offline. So there, are, there is more impetus to create um, different assessment tools for different populations as we go along. Um, and then we've got Alex from our, our office. Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. And uh, she brings up a really good point. If, if you come across any resources, please uh, push it this way, and we'll make sure um, we can have uh, we can have a further discussion and share those resources with others. So if there's no other questions, um, I'd like to thank you again for participating today. I want to thank Lynn for hosting Leisure Information Network and Chris and Carrie in particular. And uh, I want to uh, have you all think, you know, think today, what is one thing, either from something you saw today or something you, you know, even if you're perusing through the resource, um, what is one thing that you will do different tomorrow to create a better or higher quality physical literacy experience in the work that you do? That's my challenge for you to take away today is um, what's one call to action that you can take? It doesn't have to be big. You know, you're not going to cure cancer tomorrow. But um, I think, uh, think it would be great if we could... Uh, have people move to an action step, some of the how-to pieces. Thank you again for your time, and uh, enjoy the rest of the nice weather um, that we have for this summer. Take care. Bye-bye. Yes, well, thank you so much, Drew, and thanks, everybody. I'm sure we are all, uh, <laughs> we, we understand how valuable your time is, so we really appreciate you taking some time to spend with us. Just a reminder, today's session was recorded, and uh, in the next little while, we will be sending that link to you, uh, along with the survey to get some feedback on our session today. Uh, but then that's a, a, a link you can feel free to re refer to and certainly share with colleagues if you think they'd be interested. Um, we have a newsletter related to after school um, that via active uh, after school .ca you can um, sign, up to, uh, sign up for to find out more information about things we're doing. That's all uh, available for sign up and things through the site. Um, 
But again, just thank you all for your time, and you will be hearing from me shortly with a, a link to today's session for reference. Thanks again. Carrie, if I, I could just, just carry. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, just one quick thing. Um, as part of a Trillium project that we're, Sport for Life is doing in Ontario, there is an opportunity between now and mid-December for us to deliver a uh, physical literacy 301, uh, which is integrating physical, uh, physical literacy into your programs, and it's a four-hour workshop, um, free of charge. There's a, uh, we have about four or five of those available, and uh, we would love to, if you're with recre a recreation department in Ontario, We'd love to get engaged with you. I've, I've got a number of them already lined up, but uh, there's a few more spots left. So if there is an interest, um, I'm going to put my email up there again. Um, and you can contact me directly. Um, oops, that's not right. I didn't put for life. Ah, oh, damn. Let's try that again. Uh, and. Um, we would be happy to, I'd happy to talk to you about that and see if we can organize something in your community, okay? Um, yeah, so Jody and I can have this further conversation. So contact me and we'll have a further conversation. Thank you again, Carrie and Chris. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Goodbye, everyone.